Hey everyone, it's Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're going to break down electrolyte imbalances. But before we get started, for my Simple Nursing members, we're going to make sure this information actually sticks. So grab this study guide from your membership and be sure to follow along with this video. Let's make it as easy as possible to remember. Oh, and for those of you who aren't yet members, there's a special link to a free download below. Okay, now before we start breaking down the need to know information for your exam, real quick question again. What the heck are electrolytes? Well, the medical definition of electrolytes are primarily found in fluids. They are ions that create electrical energy to help our body maintain normal functioning, mainly in the muscles, nerves, heart, and brain. Now, remember, they help us to maintain fluid balances because where fluids flow, electrolytes go. Or in other words, where fluids flow, electrolytes go. So please just remember anything that depletes water or fluid like VPPS, vomiting, peeing, pooing like diarrhea, sweating will all deplete electrolytes. All right, guys, so let's break this down real quick. Okay, first on the list, let's talk about King Potassium, the king of action and contraction inside your muscles. Now, potassium's function is to maintain heart and muscle contraction. Hyperkalemia is over 5.0. So the big signs and symptoms is the heart will be tight and contracted like a cramp. So you're going to have hyper heart, ST elevation, peaked T waves, wide QRSs. In severe high potassium, we'll have V-fib as well as cardiac standstill. Also, hypotension, low blood pressure, and bradycardia. Because, guys, everything in the heart is so tight and contracted. Now, in the GI, it'll be tight and contracted as well. So, diarrhea and hyperactive bowel sounds. Too much going on right here in the bowels. Now, third, neuromuscularly, you'll have tight and contracted. So, paralysis in the extremities. Basically, they can't move. Paresthesias or numbness, increased DTRs, these deep tendon reflexes, too much action and contraction. Also profound muscle weakness or basically just a general feeling of heaviness. So guys, a real quick NCLEX tip for you. Words like profound and severe are late and serious signs, indicating a priority patient. So guys, always assess these patients first. Now, hypokalemia, hypo meaning low and slow, this is less than 3.5 potassium. We usually start seeing signs and symptoms below 3.0. Now, first in the heart, it's going to be low and slow. So guys, flat T waves, ST depression, and also, write this down, prominent U waves. Heck is a U wave? Shut up, you. No, I'm <laughs> now, number two, muscular system will be low and slow. So you'll have decreased deep tendon reflexes. Flaccid paralysis, meaning paralyzed limbs like they can't move. Now, the GI tract will be low and slow. So, guys, decreased motility, hypoactive bowel sounds, and constipation, abdominal distension, and please write this one down. It's very important. Paralytic ileus, basically meaning a paralyzed intestine. Now, this is a priority because it could lead to an SBO, a small bowel obstruction. Basically, the intestines could explode. So hyper and hypokalemia, this high and low potassium, guys, try not to get confused here because both of them have confusion and weakness for neurological as well as respiratory failure. So guys, stick to the top three I just listed above and you should do well on your test. All right, next we have salty sodium, aka just sodium. Sodium's three functions is to maintain blood pressure, blood volume, as well as pH balance. So what happens if you have too much and are hypernatremic? So basically, your patient's going to be big and bloated. So the skin's going to look like Santa Claus, to be honest. You'll have flush, red and rosy cheeks, a big adenomous waterbed skin, and also a low-grade fever. Second, polydipsia for excessive thirst because all the excess salt in the body. Now third, these are late and serious signs, these three right here. So write these down. Swollen, dry tongue, big tip for the NCLEX guys. Also, nausea, vomiting, and increased muscle tone. Very, very severe hypernatremic. Late signs. Write them down, guys. Huge for the test. Get a full breakdown of what you need to pass the NCLEX with our NCLEX review lecture series and live cram sessions led by myself and industry experts. 
Now, hypo with this low sodium depends on the cause, either too much or too little fluid. But guys, in both cases, you have top three priorities. First is neuro. You'll have seizures and comas. Second is the heart. You'll have tachycardia, basically a high heart rate, as well as weak, thready pulses. Third, you'll go into respiratory arrest, meaning your patient's not breathing. Technically, both high and low sodiums have neurological deficits like restlessness and fatigue, as well as abdominal cramping. But remember hypernatremia. Severe signs as nausea, vomiting, red beefy tongue, and increased muscle tone. Next, we have the family favorite, Miss Four-Eyed Chloride. She is so cute. She always follows her sister around, Miss Salty Sodium, and does everything that sodium does. So her main function is the same as Salty Sodium. So we have three here. It's to maintain blood volume, blood pressure, as well as pH in your body fluids. So with hyperchloridemia, it's going to be nearly the same as high sodium. You'll have nausea, vomiting, swollen, dry tongue, as well as confusion. Now with hypo, you'll have nearly the same as low sodium. So excessive diarrhea, vomiting, sweating, as well as fever. That's really the only difference here. Doggy, we have Magnum Magnesium, the sheriff in town. He's the guy with the big guns here. His main function is to maintain law and order in the muscles by calming them down, keeping the peace, mainly in the heart, uterus, and the deep tendon reflexes. Now, magnesium is required for both calcium and vitamin D absorption, and this is why his best friend is calcium. Okay, guys, so write this down. Hyper mag. All the organs will be calm and quiet. So think in your mind, the big guns, the sheriff is in town, so the heart is going to be calm and quiet. You'll have heart blocks, prolonged PR intervals, basically the heart is calm and quiet, as well as vital signs like bradycardia, or low heart rate, and hypotension, a low blood pressure. So the deep tendon reflexes will be calm and quiet. You'll have hyporeflexia, decreased DTRs. Lungs will be calm and quiet, depressed, shallow respirations, and the GI, well, you guessed it, calm and quiet, hypoactive bowel sounds. Now for hypomagnesium, this is totally the opposite. There's no sheriff in town, no law and order, hypomag, everything is like buck wild. Yeehaw! <laughs> so the heart's going to be buck wild. Your EKG is going to show torsadas de puentes, basically a tornado in the heart. You'll also have V-fib, possibly, as well as a high heart rate called tachycardia. But for EKG specifically, you'll have ST depression and T-wave inversion. Now, number two for our deep tendon reflexes. Guys, they're going to be going buck wild, like hyperreflexia, increased DTRs. And number three, the eyes are going to be going buck wild, abnormal eye movements called nystagmus. And number four, the GI system will be going buck wild with diarrhea. Now, technically, both with hyper and hypomag, the neurological system will be confused and irritable, as well as the lungs will have shallow respirations. And up next, we have cocky calcium from Muscle Beach, California. Because calcium CA kind of looks like California CA, calcium's main function is to keep the three Bs strong. Bones, blood, and beats. Blood for clotting factors and beats for heartbeats. So hypercalcemia, everything is going to be so swollen and slow with moans, groans, and stones. So constipation from a swollen and slow GI, bone pain because calcium is leaving the bones and going into the bloodstream. We'll also have kidney stones called renal calculi as well as deep tendon reflexes will be swollen and slow. So decreased DTRs and severe muscle weakness. Okay, now next is hypocalcemia. Now, this one's a little bit fun, because cocky calcium goes to Mexico, Baja, California. So he learns two new dance moves, so write this down. Trovasiers, which is basically that arm twerk with a blood pressure cuff on. And also Shavak sign, basically the smile when you're stroking the cheek. Guys, those are the two biggest ones for your next test, so write those down. He'll also have diarrhea, so just think he had bad burritos in Mexico. And lastly, circumoral tingling, basically tingling around the mouth. Lastly, let's think about his job functions, making the three Bs strong. The bones, the blood, and the beats. But guys, calcium's on vacation. You think he's going to think about his job functions? So you think we'll have strong bones? No, they're going to be weak, so you're going to have a risk for fractures. Strong blood clotting? No, so you're going to have a risk for bleeding. 
What about strong heartbeats? Mm, no, you'll have cardiac dysrhythmias, all from this hypo low calcemia. Now, last but not least is friendly frat boy phosphates, calcium's worst enemy. He basically does the opposite that calcium does. Now, phosphate is essential for bone and teeth formation and helps regulate calcium even though, yes, they're complete enemies. So guys, please write this down. They always work inversely. So if calcium is high, then phosphate is low. And when calcium is low, then phosphate is high. So hyperphosphatemia. Guys, think low calcium because remember, high phosphate, low calcium. Calcium went to Mexico. So you're going to have those two dance moves, Chovase sign as well as Shivox. And you also have diarrhea. And write this down because we just covered it. Weak bones, a risk for fractures, weak blood, a risk for bleeding, and weak beats from cardiac dysrhythmias. Lastly, we have hypophosphatemia. So think high calcium, swollen and slow, with moans, groans, and stones. So we'll have constipation, decreased swollen DTRs, deep tendon reflexes, severe muscle weakness, as well as decreased heart rate, respiratory rate, and kidney stones from the renal calculi. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by Nursing School Topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.